Cinema 4D's fields can be useful for a lot of different things. And in an upcoming project, I was using them to generate a pulsing effect using vertex maps inside of Redshift. So I'll show you a sneak peek of that right now. And from there, we can go ahead and show you how we're gonna achieve this. So let's just get some geometry in here. So I'm gonna use just a landscape here just to give us something interesting. And we'll just change the seed to something random. And that should be just fine. We're gonna go ahead and make this editable. And we're gonna go to our point mode. And we're gonna go up to our selection and set the vertex weight because we need to have a vertex tag to enable fields to generate something like you saw. So let's go ahead, select our tag here and use click use fields. And then from here, we're gonna just delete the freeze. I'm gonna use a spherical field. So I'll just click the spherical field. And you can see that we're already starting to get something here. And red here is gonna be a basically a 0% weight and the yellow will be 100% weight. So as we use this tag in Redshift to generate our transition between textures, 0% would be our base color, and then our secondary color will be shown only where this yellow is showing up. So let's go ahead and create a Redshift material and jump in here, just resize this. And to be able to use a redshift or a vertex map inside a redshift, we need to use the Cinema 4D vertex map. And then we'll just drag that into there. And let's drop in a secondary material as well as a material blender so that we can blend between these two materials. And I'm just going to set these colors to something that's going to contrast quite a bit. So we'll use a blue and then we'll use a bright green as well. And then I'll wire these up so our blue will be the base color and the green will be our layer one color. And we'll wire that into the surface. And then our vertex map is going to control the transition between the two. So if I go ahead and open up our render view, you can see that essentially it's, it's going to be what you just saw there. And we got pretty much the exact same thing. So as we change the spherical field here, we're going to change the size. You see that it's going to update and change based on our settings. As well as if we change the offsets here, it's going to change how drastic the transition is. But we want to create something like the uh, pulsing effect that we saw in the beginning. We're going to do that using a couple different fields. So let's go ahead and we're going to use the size here. Let's set this down to zero and keyframe this. And let's go to frame like. Let's do frame 30 so it goes for just a second and then we'll do uh, 800 I think is what it needs to go across the entirety of the train here. And then we're gonna jump back into the vertex tag here so you can see that this has a 100% shading which is what we want but we wanna cut away from that. So we're gonna use the secondary spherical field. Oops, a secondary spherical field. And then we're gonna set this one to subtract. So you can see now this secondary field is cutting away from the first one. And let's just change the inner offset here so it's a little bit harsher of a transition but still has a little bit of a blend between the two. So let's go back to the field and go back to frame zero and we'll start to see if I actually disable this first. Let's offset this by a few frames. So maybe frame five and we can go back to our field and change the size all the way down. And then we'll go to uh, frame 30 again and then we'll change this to 800 and that will get rid of our entirety of our thing. Let's actually offset this by just a couple frames so that it doesn't uh, scale differently or too much differently than our first field. We don't want it to overtake the first one. So as you can see here, let's just set this to 35. If I play this, now you can see this pulsing effect between the two. But let's say we wanna make this a little bit different, just 
add a little bit more of variation to our, our transition here, we can use a shader field and then we'll use a noise shader. There we go. And then we're going to set this to subtract as well. Or maybe we'll do, we'll play around with the different settings here. Maybe a multiply would look good. Let's use a multiply. And then we'll change this noise. Let's change it to something a little interesting. Maybe gaseous. That sounds sounds nice. And we can up this. That looks kind of cool. And then we can change our high and low clips as well. Do something real weird. Um, just up the contrast a bit there maybe. And you know what? I'm kinda, kinda liking something like this. So you can get some really cool effects going with this. And it's kinda pulsing with this cool kinda transition between the two. And if you wanted to actually make this look a little bit, uh, make the sphere not be so big before it starts pulsing, we can change our keyframe so let's set this just drag this keyframe maybe set it to two and then we'll set this back to 30 as well that way as we go here and we step through our frames the secondary sphere is right behind the first one and we have this kind of cool pulsing effect and if we open up our redshift render view let's see what this looks like and we'll play it we can actually play through and it'll Give us a pretty good idea of what it'll look like. So it's not coming through nearly as good on our redshift. Maybe we need to crank up our, or just change the colors. Might be a little bit hard to see based on the colors that we have. See what the, the red looks like. So it looks like maybe changing that wasn't such a great idea. Maybe we'll leave it something like that and then just bring it back to 32. So this gives us a, a kind of nice cool transition with a, a pulsing effect. And if you really wanted to as well, if we jump into here, sort of like I had in the video, you could set this to black as the base color. And you can see that now it's kind of with a black background, it's showing just what our um, object is based on the secondary color. But if we wanna change this actually to, we can set a opacity value. Um, we should be able to set an opacity value. Or maybe that was in the color layer. I bet you that's in the color layer. Actually, we can use this to drive our opacity of our Secondary, actually we can just set this to completely opaque. What am I doing? Set this to completely opaque. And now, if I were to drop a sphere or something behind it, you can see that we have our texture with our base layer just being opaque. So you could use this for something super cool, um, like a sort of like a a shield effect on something like a spherical shield effect and do something cool with that as well you can see as we go across there you can see anything that's underneath it and you can get ge really generate some really cool effects with this um, but not too difficult to set up uh, pretty easy to use these vertex maps inside of redshift uh, and they're definitely very powerful with the with the new um, fields that we have with the, the past couple versions of cinema. So hopefully this helped you out and can give you some cool ideas on how to do, do some different things um, like I showed in the sneak peek of what I'm working on. Um, that video hopefully will be up before too long. Thinking maybe it's gonna take me another week to finish if I'm lucky, maybe two weeks. So keep an eye out for that. A lot of new stuff coming, I have a lot of tutorials for Houdini coming, as well as some for Sima 4D and Redshift, as well as Houdini and Redshift is something I'm planning on jumping into. Uh, Houdini just got updated to 18.5, and I'm looking forward to using Redshift inside of the new version as well with the new, all the new things that are added inside of there. So 
I'm looking to, to do some more content with that. So if that's something that you want to jump into as well, make sure you keep an eye out for that. But thank you guys for watching and have a good day.